students. In this video, we'll move on with exponential and complex sine and cosine functions. Let's recall Euler's formula. tells us that e to the i y is the cosine of y plus i the sine of y, right? And we proved this is more fit, right? Plug in i y and version calculators for e to the x, and I get this relation, right? So we're going to use this relationship. Now we can use this. We will use this. In an idea called analytic continuation, an analytic continuation, which we'll discuss in length later. Make sense of this, but I'm really using analytic QA. Fine. E to the Z, which is a principle, which is E to the X plus IY. To B, by definition, it is one of many equivalent definitions of E to the B, to be E to the X times E to the IY, which is E to the X cosine Y plus I e to the x sine y. So the definition of what e to the z is. Now, what are some properties of e to the z over here? Well, what can you do? Now, what can you note? So here's a proposition. e to the z plus 2 pi i is to e to the z. Okay, of course, the proof is straightforward. Proof. Well, what do I know? This is going to be e to the what? Proof is that this is going to be e to the x plus i and then y plus 2 pi. That's what e to the z plus 2 pi i is, right? It's going to be e to the x cosine of y plus 2 pi plus e to the plus i e to the x sine of y plus 2 pi. And now sine and cosine are 2 pi periodic functions, right? So this is e to the x cosine y plus i e to the x sine y, and that's just exactly e to the z. So we have this remarkable property of e to the z is that e to the z is 2 pi i periodic. So hence, e to the z is 2 pi i periodic. In other words, e to the z is a complex valued periodic function with a complex valued period, okay? Excellent. And so now, what can we do from this? So, of course, we have one of these, we have these, these beautiful results over here. That, so, sometimes you see these on like math cups or all over math posters. And let me, let me write down this result over here. So, what's a consequence of this? So, the immediate consequence, which you see on, like I said, on coffee cups all the time, is you see that e to the what? If I plug in pi over 2 i, what's e to the pi over 2 i? Well, that's just going to be, there's no x's over here. So, that's going to be the cosine of pi over 2 plus what? Plus i, the sine of pi over 2, because x is equal to 0. The sine of pi over 2, the cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0, and the sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, so this is just going to be equal to i over here, right? And if I plug in, for example, pi, e to the i pi, you'll see this is going to be the cosine of pi plus i, the sine of pi, which is just negative 1, and that's what's, I guess, the more famous coffee cup water that implies that 1 plus e to the i pi is equal to zero, right? So in other words, that's the thing that you see in all sorts of coffee mugs because it relates the important mathematical concepts, right? It relates the number zero, which is very important in mathematics, one, the additive identity, the multiplicative identity, then you have Euler's number e, you have the imaginary unit i, and then pi. So you get this beautiful formula that relates all, through all five of those concepts over there. Okay, excellent. Now, this allows me to, just, to also define what these trigonometric functions are, right? And of course, we'll see in further videos when we talk about differentiation that we know about differentiation is that the derivative of e to the z is going to be e to the z. Okay, excellent. And so now here's another definition. So definition, we're going to define, for example, so um, let me just re remind you, of course, what's the motivation for this definition. So you recall, cosine of x is e to the i x plus e to the minus i x over 2, and the sine of x is e to the i x minus e to the minus i x over 2. We use this result in Calc 2 and differential equations a lot, so I'm just going to mark these things. And so again, I'm going to use analytic continuation, which we haven't proven yet, but we're going to use it as our motivation for this to make these following definitions. The cosine of z, the cosine of z is going to be e to the what? It's going to be e to the i z, 
plus e to the minus iz, all divided by what? All divided by two. And of course, there's a two i down here, right, for sine. So then sine of z is gonna be what? It's gonna be e to the i z minus e to the minus i z all over two i like that, okay? Excellent. Okay, and so now what? And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these definitions over here and let's plug in some interesting values over here. So for example, if I plug in a purely imaginary term, the cosine, so what's the consequence of this? If we look at, for example, the cosine, cosine of let's say i times y, the cosine of i times y is gonna be what? Is gonna be e to the what? e to the minus i times i y, plus e to the minus i and then i y over two, and this becomes what? This is gonna become e to the negative y plus e to the uh, positive y over two, and so that tells me that the cosine of i y is equal to the cosh, hyperbolic cosine, of y. And so now it's a really interesting property of this thing over here. As y goes to infinity, so in other words, as cosine, so here's the real axis, here's the imaginary axis over here. So if I go to infinity along the imaginary axis like this, as y goes to infinity, what happens to the cosine of i, y? Well, the cosh of y is going to what? The cosh of y is going to infinity. So when we extend sine and cosine into the complex plane, they become unbounded functions, right? So this is really interesting, so these become unbounded functions in the complex plane. Okay, of course I can play the same game with, with um, sine and cinch, of course, up to, a, up to a factor of i, right? So this is our, at least our first introduction of how we take complex valued functions and basically allow, or we take real valued functions, identities, these are identities, this is an identity over here, right? So over here what we're doing is we're taking an identity, right? Over here we're taking an identity, two identities, and we're extending those identities to the complex plane. So the idea of extending identities from a real plane to the complex plane is this idea of analytic continuation where results, if results are true on a set where there's a point of accumulation, we're gonna use the fact that analytic functions have a power series at any point to basically extend that identity to any point inside that disk of convergence. So in other words, I'm able to take a one-dimensional, as long as that one-dimensional set has a point of accumulation, I'm allowed to take that identity and extend it to the complex plane. So this may seem like I'm doing something with a little bit of hand-waving, but really I'm banking on the fact that I can use these definitions, these definitions are rigorously defined if I can use tools from analytic function theory which we're gonna prove in further videos. So in further videos, we're really gonna hone in on this idea of analytic continuation and properties of power series to rigorously justify these conventional definitions of cosine and sine and e to the z in terms of complex valued functions. Thank you very much.